So Spider-Man Lotus, if you guys are unfamiliar, is a fan-made film that's been in the works for quite a while. And you may be thinking, well, why do I care about this fan film? Well, the director was hyping it up to be the single greatest piece of Spider-Man media in recent years since like Spider-Man 2. It also generated like over a hundred thousand dollars from fans backing up the project. So as a self-proclaimed fan of the webhead myself, I had to check it out. It's had its fair share of controversies, you know, the usual stuff. Um, the main actor who plays Peter Parker slash Spider-Man saying the N-word multiple Whoa! times. Oh, the director also saying the n-word and other racist things so so you know just typical uh typical movie stuff and after watching it for myself i am happy to report that this film does indeed suck major balls so the movie starts off with spider-man fighting the shocker and you know like classic spider-man does he makes some quips while he's fighting what are you wearing it's my shocker suit <laughs> your shocker suit that's what you're calling. Yeah. Wow. This version of Spider-Man clearly has zero points in charisma, but he does have 50 points in racism. Zingo! I hope you enjoyed that small taste of Spider-Man actually being Spider-Man, because uh, that, that's all you're getting for the rest of the movie. What, you thought you came here to see a Spider-Man movie? <laughs> no. Oh yeah, we'll give you Spider-Man, except he's gonna be sad and depressed the entire time. And he's gonna be edgy. All of the completely opposite things that make Spider-Man's character appealing in the first place. If you ever wanted to see Peter and his friends sulk around and be sad and argue and be depressed and dramatic for two hours straight, then this is the perfect movie for you. Anyways, Spider-Man defeats Shocker and then we cut to several transition shots. Which are completely unrelated. And awkwardly long. Holy fucking shit, man. Just get to the scene already. We are then introduced to Peter Parker and his posse. Thanks, Harry. How you been, buddy? Now, this is a two-hour film after all, so I'm expecting some character development. There is no character development. You would think that in a two-hour film, you could get me to care about four characters. See, these characters are already established in fiction, but this is a different adaptation, and I'm not familiar with these versions. Also, the lines seem very scripted and the dialogue doesn't flow naturally. And I'm sorry, I have to keep on saying I'm sorry. You know how it is with May and, and the Bugle? I love you, Peter Parker. That look here, but six. Who the fuck talks like this? Y'all ever just refer to your significant other? by their full name. I, I get it's for like dramatic effect for the movie, but but that's not how people, I don't think that's how people talk in real life. So the premise of the film follows the aftermath of Gwen Stacy's death. And after a long unnecessary title card sequence, We are then presented with Spider-Man watching a newscast of the events that have just unfolded. Except the news anchor sounds literally nothing like a news anchor. I don't know where they got this guy. I don't know how this made it into the final production. We are coming on the air with some rather unfortunate news. To report that businessman and former head of Oscorp, Norman Osborne, has been confirmed dead in an abandoned warehouse near Breezy Point, New York. I'm sure they could have just hired someone on Fiverr and they would have done a better job. It's just kind of embarrassing and uh, very amateur that they couldn't even nail the voice of a news anchor. That's not even, that's not even hard. Yeah, that's right, they put another title card. I, I guess in case you forgot what you were watching. It is then immediately followed up by a scene of Peter and MJ arguing at Gwen's grave. Because when you think of Spider-Man and how cool he is, that is the top thing that comes to your mind. It's Peter and MJ arguing. None of you get it, I don't want to talk to anyone. Peter, don't get mad at me for trying to help. You're not trying to help. Yes, I know I better am. than most. You never cared about me. Never. So get to the point. Why are you here? This shit plays out like a shitty sitcom. Nobody wants to go out with me anymore. What, so you came to bug me about it? No. I, I came by to see if you wanted to go to a party or something. This line of dialogue made me physically cringe. It is atrocious. She then hands him a letter 
sent to the Daily Bugle about a terminally ill kid who would love to meet Spider-Man. To which Peter replies, He's retired. Retired. Because, because Peter's edgy. He's basically acting like symbiote Spider-Man. This movie sucked. This scene is then immediately followed up by another argument, this time involving Peter and Harry, where they're having a pissing competition about who's more sad. It's about Gwen. She just died. Why didn't you show up? Everyone was there. Everyone. Yeah, here you are, running around, doing whatever you want, hiding. My father just died! Bruh. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Good thing they made it very obvious that Harry is doing drugs because he's sad and depressed. I wouldn't want to miss that key information because, you know, it wasn't obvious enough already. Just a little easter egg for you avid eagle-eyed viewers out there. Look, there's even a pill bottle on the ground, guys. Blink and you just might miss it. Hey guys, new season of Euphoria just dropped. Oh wait, it's just Spider-Man Lotus. Why does it look like they're about to make a rough, passionate gay love in about five seconds from, from now? Boy got that light skin stare. Hey, did you guys know that Gwen died because Spider-Man failed to save her? In case you didn't know that already, let me smack you over the head with a dream sequence explaining that Peter failed to save Gwen. Don't worry guys, if you forget that information at any point of this film, it's gonna come back every five minutes anyways. He then wakes up in a cold sweat after the passionate love he made with Harry. Uh, wait, that's, that's the wrong movie. Hold he then wakes up in a cold sweat and then walks over to his laptop to start watching video footage of his happy memories with his friends. You know, I feel like this scene would have been more effective if it was way earlier in the movie. And also if it wasn't exceptionally long. This scene was just... I actually started laughing during the middle of this scene because it was just too long and it just it kept dragging out. Hey, did you guys know that Peter is sad that Gwen's dead? I, I just need to make sure that you know that. It's immediately followed up by probably one of the worst scenes in the movie. It's something that I feel like should have just been cut entirely. It's just, it's literally just a compilation of Harry sulking around the city. We already know he's sad. You showed this like three scenes ago. You don't need to show us again five seconds later. And not only that, but it's awkwardly long and dragged out as well. I don't think the director knows when to end his scenes because I, that is like one of the major problems of this film. The scenes just go on way too long. Anyways, next scene. Here's Spider-Man and Green Goblin fighting in a warehouse. Green Goblin just goes off talking about how Spider-Man hurts the people that he loves and that he's never able to save the people that he wants to. But don't worry, if this seems a little redundant, it's just gonna keep going on for the rest of the movie. Also, where the fuck is Green Goblin's glider? That's like the equivalent of Doc Ock without his tentacles or Captain America without his shield. So now that we've got the scenes of Peter and Harry being sad, we gotta finish the trifecta. MJ has a conversation with Flash, reminiscing about how their life used to be better. I'm so glad they hired AliExpress Bill Hader to play Flash Thompson. And actually, shockingly, Flash's acting is actually worse than the rest of the cast. You no, know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I was always a little bit jealous of him. I was always somehow getting looks from Gwen, Liz, or you. I know you two are close now. You know, uh, I used to hate him. Oh, brother, I think he hated me too. I also find it weird that there's no music coming from the party they're supposedly at. Like, I get that they wanted to add their own music for the film, but if you're gonna add the background chatter of people from the party, you might as well just add the music too, because it just, it just sounds really awkward. There's literally lights flashing in there, you're telling me they're not blasting music too? Or is that just the most soundproof room in all of NYC? Or maybe the director just hasn't been to any parties before. Just for future reference, Mr. Director, uh, parties usually have music playing in them. I know you, you probably didn't have a good social life growing up because you think saying the n-word is a funny punchline. <laughs> <Got he. laughs> you know, just FYI for any future projects. At this point, we're already in almost an hour in, and nothing substantial has really happened. It's kind of just been scenes explaining that everyone's sad and that Peter is a failure. 
I don't think it should have took almost an hour to explain that. Now comes the scene that I feel like could have been the redeeming factor of this movie. However, they butchered it. Hi, Tim. Nice to meet you. I'm Spider-Man. This kid sees him as an inspiration. He sees him as a hero. Is Spider-Man finally gonna start being Spider-Man again now? No. Hey, Spider-Man? Yeah, Tim? What happened to the girl on the bridge? And then it fades to black. And before you ask, no I didn't edit that, that is actually how long the black screen lasts because the director doesn't know when to cut his fucking footage. Hey, did you guys know that Harry is sad? Well here's, here's a scene of him crying in the rain at his father's grave, just in case the two minutes of him sulking around in the city wasn't enough. Here's the classic teenage trope of, oh my gosh, you're crying in the rain? We have to talk about your issues, you're destroying yourself. Am I watching a Spider-Man piece of media or a teenage drama show? I don't understand. And the next scene is Spider-Man still with the terminally ill kid. And this could have easily been the best scene in the entire film. But they, they like I said, they fucked it up. That girl. She, she's gone. But you tried to save her. I saw the videos. The Beagle's making up stories like they always do. It's not the same. There's more to it that you wouldn't understand. For the love of God! I don't understand. I know, you're just a kid. Yes! 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 I think I might be able to help you understand it a little better. Sit down. Oh my god, is Spider-Man gonna tell his origin story and then remember why he became Spider-Man in the first place and then realize he's doing a disservice to Uncle Ben and Gwen Stacy by not continuing to be Spider-Man? No. And it all started with this. Oh, costume. for the love! It was the greatest mistake of my life. But you're a hero. You saved all those people. Oh, maybe he's gonna come back around. And how many others suffered because of? Fuck! I can't do this. I'm sorry. Wait, Spider-Man. This version of Spider-Man is the biggest fucking loser I've ever had the displeasure of witnessing. And the real kicker is this film is two fucking hours long. One of the core aspects of Spider-Man's character is that he gets back up even in the face of adversity. Sure, he may feel down on his luck sometimes, but we shouldn't make a two-hour film about that. God damn, what a fucking drag this film is. Just when you think it's about to get good, it nosedives face first into the concrete. And this next scene is probably my favorite one in Riverdale. It's uh, Harry and MJ arguing in, in the car while it's raining. And I just... Uh, wait. wait. This isn't Riverdale. This is... Spider... This is Spider-Man Lotus? But where's Spider-Man? Oh, there's Spider-Man. He's leaving the house. I guess that kid wasn't able to convince him. So, it doesn't matter what you think about yourself. Because he deserves somebody to believe in. Okay. Hey, buddy. Are you fucking kidding me? This kid is dying from a sickness, and he says that he loves you because he sees you as his hero? Not only that, but he's constantly reminding you of all the good you've done for the city, and you're just like, I can't do this anymore. But the second that this dying kid's mom says the same exact stuff that the dying kid already told you, that's when you're gonna be... The, uh, I am fucking appalled. This is some of the worst writing I've ever witnessed. All of this dragging out, going in circles, just for the shittiest fucking payoff in the entire world. And then everyone lived happily ever after. Except for the kid who was sick because he fucking died. And they couldn't even get his age right on the tombstone. So, how old are you anyway? I'm 10, but I'm turning... Up. My birthday's in August. Embarrassing! <laughs> at this point, just watch Amazing Spider-Man 2, because at least that did a better adaptation of Gwen Stacy's death, and at least it's bearable to watch, unlike this thing. Oh! I'm, I'm, li I'm so tired of editing this video. This, it just reminds me how dog shit this movie was. It's, it's done, okay? Video's done.